I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS ZenBook this particular one is an UX31A model and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to open it up and how to clean up if yours is overheating it's really easy and really simple and not many tools that you need tools that you're going to be needing is a workshop towel the workshop towels you can find the links in my description you will need a 95 or 98 percent isopropolic alcohol or isopropolic alcohol you need a screwdriver set i use the ifixit tool set as they have one of the best screwdriver set out there they have an s2 class steel you're going to be using a torque number five and phillips number zero from this screwdriver set also you will need a thermal paste i'm going to use an arctic mx4 thermal paste and that will be all to to start this process so first thing first once you power it up completely you want to flip it over and you're going to see a whole bunch of screws down here these are the torque number five screws so grab your torque number five bit and the, all the screws are almost the same except these two mid back screws these are the longest one and the rest are the short ones so don't worry about mismatching the side screws except the long one. So go ahead and remove all the side screws and the two long ones. Also, I realize only a few of my viewers are subscribing to my channel or supporting. It would be really nice help or support if you guys can click like button on my videos or subscribe to my channel. It really helps and motivates me to make more videos and take requests from you guys. Obviously, if you find my content helpful. I really appreciate it. All right. And these two last screws right here, these are the longest one. There we go. So you can see these are the long one, those are the short one. To open it up, all you need to do is use your fingernail. You want to put your fingernail right underneath here and just pinch it really hard. Yours might be really tougher, just really hard so it pops open. And this is the bottom cover. You can grab an old toothbrush. Actually, you do need a toothbrush to clean up here. And down here, you can see all the dust build up in the heat pipe and everything like that. Before we do anything, we're going to disconnect the battery by removing this tape right here. I don't know if you, yours might have it or not. The battery connector is right over here. All you need to do is pull this jack upward. Towards the ceiling and the connector will get loose. The BIOS battery is right here. You don't need to remove the BIOS battery. Now we're gonna switch to a Phillips number zero. We're gonna remove the one screw and the four screws for the heat sink right here. In total of five screws for the heat sink. I made another video on how to upgrade your hard drive if you want to add an extra capacity SSD drive. All right, once you remove that one, grab it right by the heat sink. Let me see if I'm missing another one. Let's go ahead and remove the fan screw. So remove it because we're going to clean up the fan too. So remove that one and this one over here. We also need to remove this bridge cable right here. So put your finger right underneath and lift it up 90 degrees and pull out this cable. So do the same thing on the other side. So remove this bridge cable. And the fan is, it will come out as a, you do need a tweezers to grab all these cables here. Um, pull back, don't pull back on these cables for the fan cable, otherwise you're gonna rip them apart. Put, a, put your tweezers right beside this connector, right there, hook them there and pull it backward. Don't pull it too much, otherwise you're gonna damage the backlit, backlight. So move it around slowly and bring it up, bring it to the side. Now once this one is loosened up, you can go ahead and lift up the heat sink. Don't lift up the heat sink from here, otherwise you're going to bend the tubing, lift up near the CPU. And there we have it. If you see this old thermal paste is just dried up, it's pretty much useless. And look at all those tiny heat sink and filled with the dust.
So we're gonna take this outside and we're gonna use the compressed air. I'll leave the link in the description to the compressed air that I use. There you go. And we're gonna clean up with a toothbrush and I'll be back. Now that we have the fan cleaned up, look at the difference between the clean fan and the clean heat sink. And we clean up all the dust from here, the bottom cover, everything is cleaned up. Now we're gonna proceed to the next step, which is to grab our work towel shop. I'm not gonna grab I have a little used one over here. You wanna grab a workshop towel and you wanna grab the alcohol and you wanna soak it in. And the alcohol is not conductive, so don't worry about uh, touching the components. And you wanna clean up the dye, the CPU nicely. You just have to rub it. You do not need to remove the Kapton tape on the side of the CPU to clean up the around it. It's not necessary at all. But if you have an OCD on cleaning, then sure go ahead and peel off this Kapton tape and clean up the around the CPU if you want to. But that's not going to affect the temperature. I right, clean up the other. This called a PS, PCH chip. This chip actually works for the you know, file transfer and controllers. It goes through here. If you want to replace the thermal pad on this one, this is a 0.4 millimeter thermal pad. So a 0.4 millimeter thermal pad on that one. But the thermal pads, you don't, you don't need to uh, change it because it doesn't heat up too much. This one goes up to 40 or 50 Celsius. It's not that important to replace the thermal pads on that one. But if the client wants it, you always change them by the request. And once we have the, the heatsink cleaned up, the dye cleaned up, you can go ahead and use the thermal paste you want we can use the mx4 or you want to go up with a better version go with a uh, cryonaut with a thermal grizzly these are one of the best ones i'll leave the link in the description also so in this case we're going to use this thermal paste so we're going to tiny line on the cpu and that's it if you want to add a little thermal paste on the this die you're going to help the thermal pad to remove any extra bubbles that it has in there I usually add it and we test it out. It does actually help a little bit. It doesn't get worse, it will help. So now we're gonna place the this side down first and then bring, make sure the screw holes match. Once you put the heatsink down, do not lift it up again. Leave it there and start putting all the screws for the heatsink. Always cross screw them, do one corner and then do the opposite corner. So I'm doing this one, this one, then cross stitch them. Put the two screws for the fan. For, and always plug in the fan. Make sure you don't forget to plug in the fan. Otherwise, you're going to be in a big trouble. Grab the bridge. Clean up the contacts on the bridge. Make sure there's no dust or anything. You stick this I.O. side down. Lock it down. Stick it right underneath, lock it down, and the last thing would be to grab the battery and push the contacts, align it over, and push it towards the motherboard. You do not need to put this tape because it's already toasted. You don't need to replace it. Just leave it the way it is. And the last thing would be to grab the bottom cover, align it right on top. And this is very important. Once you align it right there, Change the bit to torque number five again. Put the two mid back screws and don't tighten up too much. Just over put them right there. Don't go all the way down because the cover might slightly move around to adjust the other screws. So always a good idea to not tighten it up at the first because these tiny screws are really fragile. So put these ones again really softly so there's a room for the cover to slide. Even if it doesn't look like it's not a sliding, there's a tiny millimeter, like a 0.5 millimeter, there's a sliding right there. 
it needs to slide for this one to go through so i'm just moving it around and this one is going right through and that's exactly why i'm always say do not tighten it up and again i hope you guys like this video helpful i helped you guys out if it did please click that thumbs up button and if you have any question or request leave them in the comment area and i'll try to answer them as soon as i can all right now once we put it in we're going to do the last pass and we're just going to tighten it up thank you for watching guys and i'll see you guys in my next video